A Democratic Senate candidate from Louisiana has launched his campaign with a rather, well, blunt ad. Let it speak for itself here. Every 37 seconds, someone is arrested for possession of marijuana. Since 2010, state and local police have arrested an estimated 7.3 million Americans for violating marijuana laws, over half of all drug arrests. Black people are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana laws than white people. States waste $3.7 billion enforcing marijuana laws every year. Most of the people police are arresting aren't dealers, but rather people with small amounts of pot, just like me. I'm Gary Chambers, and I'm running for the U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Gary Chambers is a leading social justice advocate from Baton Rouge, running on a progressive platform under the motto, do good, seek justice, an excerpt from the Gospel of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 17, which requires those in, positions of, to, in position to effect change to work diligently on behalf of the most vulnerable. Gary joins us now to share the inspiration behind his new ad and let us know how his campaign's doing. Welcome, Gary. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Yes, we're happy to have you here. Uh, big, I'm a big personal fan of uh, of your ad. You have some 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 fans <laughs> here on Rising and at uh, Reason, where I, I, I write for. Uh, what, so, what was? Uh, how did this idea pop into your head? Well, it wasn't all my idea. Uh, my comms team and my media director Erwin Marino came up with uh, a great strategy that uh, we really thought this is policy we stand for. Uh, a conversation that we want to have and that, you know, let's go be bold. You know, you get one shot at this to do it and uh, we're after it to win. And so we wanted to make sure that the country could kind of pay attention to what's happening in the 50th ranked state in the country. And we had to cut through the noise. And I think we've done a good job of doing that. And what's been the response so far? Have you have you seen like a significant inflow in, in small dollar contributions? We certainly have had uh, an uptick in donations. We wanted to keep going up uh, as much as possible. We're running against a uh, U.S. Senator with $10 million in the bank. And so uh, we're a long way from there, but we believe that uh, this opportunity gives us the, the ability to get our message out there in a way that can get people who care about these policies, who care about making change in this country, uh, aware that we're here and that this is a winnable race. You know, the demographics in Louisiana are very similar to uh, the demographics of Georgia. And we believe that we can do what Georgia did last year uh, here in Louisiana in 2022. Gary, what I really love about your ad is that you didn't just uh, say, let's legalize weed because I like smoking pot, you know, <laughs> but you but you actually tied it to uh, the, the prison rates and the, the arrest rates, the crime, um, people who are affected by this. And I think that was a really, really smart move because that is really the, the crux of the issue, um, I, I think. But one thing also, have you gotten a lot of pushback on it? Have people been like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe you're smoking during your entire ad? Uh, have you gotten any sort of moral posturing against it? No, and, and, and I think that we haven't gotten that because the country is just further along on what they view uh, as it relates to cannabis, right? You know, a few years ago, this would have been completely unheard of. But when there are 19 states that have legalized recreational cannabis for use, um, I think that there are a lot of people in the country who have accepted this and believe that this is not something that people should be uh, criminalized for. And listen, I live in a state that's ranked 50th in the nation in crime, 49 in opportunity. Uh, John Kennedy uh, is going to be saying things that are, like we should bring back to Chris. But the reality is, you know, police officers harassing people for cannabis is not reducing crime because we've had record breaking right. homicides uh, in our state this year. Yeah, and, and it's something, you know, I, this is a, a cause, obviously, that's important to progressives, and li I'm a libertarian, it's important to, to libertarians, but I, you know, I know Republicans, I know conservatives who think this is a waste of, of law enforcement's time, this is a misuse of, of prison resources, there's, this is, you know, it's, it's wrong to not devolve this choice to a state and local level in the first place. You know, there are all sorts of arguments, I think, with, with this issue that are appealing to people all across the political spectrum. Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, right here in Louisiana, we've had Republicans that are now bringing uh, the recreational cannabis uh, legislation before the legislature. It passed out of 
uh, committee last year, which was surprising to many people, got to a debate on the House floor. I think we have an opportunity in Louisiana uh, in 2022 to send it to the voters. I think that if the Republican legislature, Republican led legislature can do that, that they'll take a, a step in the right direction and, you know, get the attention of many people. This is uh, smart policy. And at the end of the day, when you have a state that is married to one industry and struggling to grow its economy, you need to do whatever you can to diversify. Um, and I'm not saying cannabis is an end all be all, but billions of dollars are being generated in tax revenue in other states. And people come to New Orleans and Louisiana to enjoy the culture and the food and the uh, vibrancy of our state. And so there's no reason that they shouldn't be able to enjoy recreational marijuana when they're here, which also creates revenue that we can help fix roads and bridges and schools uh, and make investment into the people of Louisiana. And I just think it's smart policy. You recently ran in a special election to replace uh, Cedric Richmond in the congressional district in, in Louisiana and came up short against two candidates uh, from New Orleans. And the district was mostly New Orleans, but some Baton Rouge. When you think back on that race, uh, was it just a regional obstacle uh, that a Baton Rouge candidate is just going to struggle uh, you know, against New Orleans candidates in a New Orleans district? Or was there something else that you've taken from that race that you're applying to your Senate campaign? Well, I think there are a couple of uh, big points here. Number one, we outperformed what anybody ever expected mm -hmm. we would do in New Orleans. We came in second place, winning 140 plus precincts out of 300 in New Orleans. Uh, nobody expected us to be able to do that, but that's because we built a very grassroots, people-powered uh, campaign. What we didn't have is the resources for the home stretch. We spent about $30,000 on TV. You guys understand politics, that if you're in a congressional race, He's spending uh, six figures or more uh, on TV. And so we didn't have the budget to do that. Uh, and so we joked among, amongst ourselves that if we had either another week or uh, another hundred thousand dollars, we would have been in the runoff. We missed it by 1500 votes, less than a percentage point. Uh, and we beat a sitting state senator in her Senate district in New Orleans. Um, and so what I think that that says is that there are people in this state, people around this uh, community that recognize that the values that we're talking about, the ideas and policies that we're talking about matter. And they also want somebody who's got a track record of showing up for the people uh, and fighting. And that has kind of been uh, how I've grown to be who I am in the advocacy space to even have the opportunity to, uh, or the privilege to be able to run for these positions. Any other interesting videos in the mix <laughs> uh, coming up? We are certainly cooking and hopefully you guys will stay paying attention. Uh, because there are a whole lot of issues uh, here in Louisiana. We rank 46 in health care, 47 in education, 47 in infrastructure, uh, 49 in the economy and environmental quality and 50 in crime. So there's a whole lot for us to talk about. Uh, Senator Froghorn Leghorn has been kind of going around the country on Fox News talking his talk, and so it's our turn to come back. I call him that, too. I've called him that before on this show. <laughs> <laughs> He, he really is. I did a pretty good impression of him off the before this segment started, but I'm I'm not going to ever pull that off again. So I'm not. How, how's your How's your John Kennedy, Gary? How's your John Kennedy impersonation? I, I don't try. It's too embarrassing, bro. <laughs> he does a good job of giving enough attention on his own. He does. He does. No doubt about it. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, I gotta have you back on soon. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. All right, we will have more rising right after this.